and let's just go ahead with this pre-reading. So the first was, Agnes, could you please repeat it? Because we are starting the recording. Thanks. Okay. What do George Floyd, Freddie Gray, and Eric Garner have in common? Like I didn't know, but we, uh, but we read that they, uh, all of them died due to police brutality, and it was recorded. Yes. And number two. Have you ever witnessed police brutality or racial discrimination in your hometown or city? Yeah. Um, no, I didn't. I think that no, I didn't. I haven't. No, no, I, I haven't. Okay. Yeah, no, I haven't. And number three. What do you think solidarity means? Mm -hmm. mm. I think that solidarity means to um, spierać to jest to support to, to support. support. I think mm -hmm. that solidarity means to support people around us and mm -hmm. in their uh, troubles, in their rights, when mm -hmm. they fight for their rights. I think that it means solidarity. Yeah, to support people in need, people in need, right? Fighting for equality, fighting for human rights, fighting for democracy, etc., etc. Okay, and as we always do, we just skip vocabulary preview because we will find out the meanings from the context. And uh, this is our method to learn a foreign language. We are trying to figure out the meaning from the context. So, Agnes, could you please start reading the text for me? Okay. Um, on May 25, 2020, a Minneapolis shop clerk called the police after a black man tried to buy cigarettes with a counterfeit $20 bill. Four police officers arrived at the scene and placed the suspect in handcuffs. Shortly after arresting George Floyd, a white officer pinned him to the ground and on his head. George Floyd begged for his life. Several bystanders captured his death on video. Yes. For okay. some reason, uh, reason, Agnes, I am uh, losing your voice. So I'm closing my camera. Should and, I close my ear? Uh, maybe yes. Maybe. All right. So we can get the volume better. Okay. Thank you very much. And let's go to number two, please. The graphic footage of George Floyd's death began to circulate on social media and protests erupted in the streets of Minneapolis and several other US cities. Huh? The protesters called for an end to racial injustice in the country and communities. <laughs> they held Black Lives Matter signs enchanted i can't breathe and hands up don't shoot people of all races were marching for justice for george floyd and all black americans killed in police custody including eric garner michael brown and freddie gray two days after george floyd's death the four police officers on the case were fired on May 29, Derek Chauvin, the officer who knelt on Floyd's neck for over eight minutes, was arrested and charged with third-degree murder and second-degree manslaughter. Laughter. Laughter, yeah. The Floyd family spoke on behalf of protesters across the country, saying that all four officers should be charged. 
In a historic moment cut caught on camera, Minneapolis police chief Medaria Randondo agreed with the Floyd family, saying that, in his opinion, silence is complicity. In some cities, police officers joined protesters on their knees to, ad to acknowledge the need for police reform. Yes. And uh, generally, uh, you understand the text, generally yeah. speaking. Generally. Yes. Mm -hmm. And let's go to number four. See, I have the problems with my mouse, but that's all right. And number four, as I speak. As George Floyd's family and supporters oh, mm -hmm. waited for further charges, some protests grew violent. Some protesters set fire to police vehicles and okay. others... Agnes, vehicles. Vehicles. Mm -hmm. and others saw an opportunity for looting and vandalism. Yeah. The violence caused city officials to impose car fuels mm -hmm. and closures. Oh, yeah. closures. Yeah. As the unrest was sent, the Floyd family called for demonstrators to protest peacefully and use their voices to vote. On the seventh night of the protests, President Trump threatened to use military forces to crack down on protesters, saying, I am your president of law and order. He encouraged all cities and states to call in the National Guard and threatened to send in the US military if they didn't. During the president's speech, the police used tear gas and rubber bullets to clear out peaceful protests near the White House and Sound John's Church, the Church of the Presidents. This allowed the president to cross the street and take a photo outside the vandalized church. On June 3rd, or 3? On June the 3rd, on June the 3rd, the day before George Floyd's funeral, Chauvin's church was upgraded to second-degree murder and the other three officers were charged with aiding and abetting. Please, 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 I can brief George Floyd. All right, and Agnes, I recall that we have watched the videos have we yes we have okay so we know the scene and the the, uh, the cameras recording the murder and it was a shocking shocking view for both of us am i right yes you're right and this is just a historical moment because it will never be forgotten. Never. And uh, I don't know what uh, the American president is going to do about it. I have no idea. And we will just see. I am updated because we watch CNN. Okay, Agnes, let's just try to do the vocabulary. Okay. So, A. Uh, the involvement, involvement in a criminal act or wrongdoing. Involvement in a criminal act or wrongdoing. It's looting. Looting. All right. Okay, let's check out the looting in the vocabulary here. And looting. And this is, uh, look, look, this, mm -hmm. but uh, look, very many different 
meanings like always. This is why we go and work with the text. But looting, uh, the basic definition is steal goods from a place, typically during a war or riot. So let's go back to our text and the involvement in criminal act of wrongdoing, it looks like the looting is a perfect choice. Yes? Yes, yes. Okay. Um, the state of being held by police mm -hmm. uh, is... Custody. Custody. Okay. Um, a person who witnesses an event but does not actively participate, it's bystander. Yes, yes, absolutely. Okay. The act of stealing from a vandalized building or business, maybe mm. this is looting. Um. This could be looting, but this could be all also vandalism. Yes. No, no, destruction of property would be probably vandalism. Um, yes. yes? Yes. So if we do the act of stealing from a vandalized building or business, and we would do uh, put looting, then we still don't know what A is. Right? Right. Okay. We can live with that. We can figure it out later. All right. And uh, this one, counterfeit. Let's just check it out. Could you check it out, Agnes, yourself? Because you do it much, much faster. Counterfeit. Okay. Yeah. Check it out, please. Okay. Should I share my screen or not? You may. Absolutely. Okay. Okay. All right. So I need to make this big, your Skype. Just a second. Okay. Uh, uh, this is so, so little. I don't know why. And how can I? improve this how can i improve it this one really i don't know but we are seeing we are seeing uh, that you are checking the meaning and what are you getting a uh, counterfeit is yeah. a, a fraudulent imitation of something else a forgery forgery Forgery, mm -hmm. or mm, or for example, imitate fraudulently. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, because this uh, this was the money that he paid for the cigarettes. They were counterfeit. They were not real. You know, they were false money, and this okay. is why. Uh, we have this counterfeit, but let's see uh, where could we use this counterfeit? Let, let's just uh, maybe this. Can you share your screen now? Ah, we lost it. Okay. All right. Just a second. Mm -hmm. And how about this now? No. I can see your screen. Yes, it's perfect. Yeah, it's just perfect in using the new technologies, lady. Yes, I <laughs> think okay. so. so. this counterfeit, look at the uh, phrases here. It's fake or for check, yes. it's not yes. real. Yes. So, mm, Fake or forget, not real. Yeah, this would go here. Okay, so where are we? Uh, it's F. 
a or time indoors. that one needs to be at home or indoors by. Uh -huh. um, it's hard to be a good Napolitina. Okay. Yeah. Uh, to take strict or disciplinary action. Mm -hmm. Is custody? Yes. Okay, uh, shown very clearly, Andreas. Realistically. Realistically. Okay, teacher, what is it? Maybe graphic? Maybe, I think so. Yeah, okay. The principle of fair or right action is justice. Yes. And, and fair. Fake or forget or not real, this was counterfeit, right? Yes, right. So, so what is the involvement in a criminal act or wrongdoing? What have we... What have we... Crack down on... Crack down. Involvement of criminal... Crack down on... And let's see in the text, all right? Let's see in the text. Where was it in the text? Aha, text is down. Okay, and let's find the crack down. Okay, crack down. If you see, yes, uh, it's paragraph five. Um, On the, yeah, go ahead. Read it. On the seventh night of the protests, President. Trump threatened to use military forces to crack down on protesters, saying, I am your president of law and order. Okay, so this means crack down on protesters. This should mean that he was threatening them, or he was threatening them. And he was, uh, yeah. Okay, so let's see how we do this. Uh, how it goes with this matching. Crack down on. The involvement in a criminal act or wrongdoing. Yeah. This is what we have here. Mm -hmm. But because we have the teacher's version, let's go and check ourselves uh, from the. Oh no, I don't have the teacher's version. I thought I oh, do. Okay. All right. But if not, let's just do the material. Okay. So now we have the comprehension. It's timeline. Yes. Go ahead. Place the following in chronological order, one to eight. One item is not mentioned in the reading, but it is correct. Place a star beside it and guess where it belongs. Okay. So, George Floyd was arrested and pinned down by a white officer. Derek Chauvin continued kneeling on Floyd's neck while he begged for his life. The police used tear gas to disrupt a peaceful protest at the White House. Four officers were called to a shop regarding a suspected for forgery. The Bishop of Washington, D.C. expressed outrage over President Trump's dis eruption of a peaceful protest for a photo op. Bystanders op. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, bystanders who captured Floyd's death on video posted footage on social media. Protests erupted in the streets of Minneapolis and across the US. Derek Chauvin was charged with a second degree murder and and the other officers were charged with aiding and abetting. So, so I, I think we should, uh, first of all, uh, find out the meaning of 
aging. Aging is like helping, right? Right. Uh, but uh, it's new for us. And this word, aging, is, let's check it out. I will check it out with you. And let's do it. And what? Nie, coś nie tak jest. Czekaj. How do we spell this? A, B. A, B. A, to je A. B. But it's helping in the crime. Yes. Also. And uh, a bit, let's listen to this pronunciation. Again, obeting, obeting, they pronounce it obeting, which I don't know why. Listen again, obeting, obeting, yeah, I don't know why this is the pronunciation like that, but this is it, obeting. All right, let's go back to our sources. So we now know that he was charged and the other officers were charged with helping and, and obeying, right? Right. And let's try to put the uh, sentences in chronological order. Okay, so I think that the first one was four officers were called to a shop regarding a suspected forgery. Okay. The second one was uh, George Floyd was arrested and pinned down by a white officer. Okay. The third one was... Um, Mm, Derek Chauvin continued kneeling on Floyd's neck while he begged for his life. Yes. And then, bystanders. A bystander who captured Floyd's death on video posted footage on social media. It was next. Mm -hmm. uh, after it, it was protests erupted in the streets of Minneapolis and across the U.S. Mm -hmm. Just a second. And across the US. Okay. And uh, the bishop. And next one wasn't this that Derek Chauvin was charged with second degree murder? I don't know if this shouldn't go now. The bishop of Washington. Uh, because the Trump did it on the, on the second day. Oh. And, and they were charged on the fourth day. Uh, okay. okay, so Derek. Okay. Derek Chauvin was charged. Uh -huh. And after that. But this, the policy used to guess shouldn't be before this, the bishop? It should. It should. It should be before the bishop. It should be before the bishop. So the police use the guess to disrupt a peaceful protest at the White House. This is what I was watching. Yes. After that was the bishop of Washington, D.C. And after that... Derek Chauvin was charged with second degree murder. Yeah. Yes. Um, now we can see what they want us to do. Practice. Ask and answer. 
kindness. So we should practice asking and answering the following questions. Oh, what is the first paragraph mainly about, Agnes? I, I, I don't shot. remember, but... Yes. The first okay. paragraph was mainly about... Uh, the beginning of all the situation, how the George Floyd died and why. It was the history, how the yeah. police officers pinned him down mm -hmm. and how bystanders captured his death on video. So we could say it was just a little introduction. Yes. And uh, what does the reading say about Eric Garner? Mm -hmm. I think that it said only that he died due to police brutality. Mm -hmm. Yes. Like here. Killed in police custody. Right in, here. Yes. So, so Eric Garner was killed in police custody. Yes. And number three. Why do you think Chaprando's words are described in the reading as historic. Okay, let's go. Let's go. Where was it? Hmm. Let's see. It's a shame that I'm not. Uh, I need to check it uh, because I have these problems with uh, oh. here. We have Polish police chief mm -hmm. Medaria Arredondo agreed with the Floyd family, saying that in his opinion, silence is complicity. In some cities, police officers joined protesters and they need to acknowledge the need for police reform. Police reform. So this is the historical moment because they claimed that the police needs reform. And let's see if we have anything more. No, we have not. It's about yeah. Then we have, we need to go down again. Oh, yeah. okay. And number four, how did George Floyd's family respond to opportunistic looters? They responded by saying that they agree with protesting peacefully and they they are saying like they try to talk to these protesters to protest in a peacefully way yes. and to use them votes in the next election perfect Agnes perfect Agnes thank, thank you much. and number five what major event happened on the seventh night of the protests? On oh. the seventh night. Okay, let's check it out. On the seventh night. Number five. On the seventh night of the protests, President Trump threatened to use military forces to crack down on protesters, saying, I am your president of law and order. So, on the seventh night, President Trump said what he thinks about protesters, I think. And he also encouraged all citizen states to call in the National Guard. And he, more than that, he was threatening to send in the U.S. military if they didn't. Mm. 
and this was threatening the Americans. If they don't follow his orders, he said, I'm going to use US military against you, right? And the police during the speech of the president, they used what, Agnes? The police used tear gas and rubber bullets to clear out a peaceful protest in the White House and sound John's church. Yes. Because the poly, the president who needs to needed to cross the street and take a photo outside the vandalized church. Yeah. Yes. So he was a hero. I'm sorry. <laughs> All right, and the, the truth of it is that the the government, Polish government, uh, is uh, copying the Trump's strategy. So, okay, so we know this one, and the next two is what we have here. The research, just a second, the research. And the jail protests were sparkled by the senseless killing of a black man in Minneapolis. However, the passion of the protesters stems, okay, stems, 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 from, stems from a history of racial discrimination and police brutality in the US. Yeah. And this is about completing this chart and doing your research. We know that Eric Garner, Freddie Gray, and and the, the third name was uh, I don't remember. Do you? No, I don't too. Okay. So this is for us to do um, at home. And uh, here, the terminology related to homicide differs depending on the country and state and offense takes place in. In a few US states, including Minnesota, there is first, second, and the third degree murder. Some states use other classification systems entirely, such as capital murder and felony murder. Here is a general classification system. So we have the chart uh, showing us the differences and the criteria is offense, nature, and example sentences. So this is the exercise to practice new terminology that we are learning right now. And Agnes, could you please start with this first degree murder? First degree murder is intentional, planned. A 15-year-old boy was charged with first-degree murder after running over a police officer. Second, wow, this example is really unbelievable. Can you imagine 15-year-old boy running over a police officer? Okay, uh, it gives me shiverings. Okay, I'm sorry. Second, please. Second degree murder is intentional, not planned. Michelle Owen Jr. was charged with second degree murder for the shooting of a handcuffed man in his patrol car. Shooting a handcuffed man in his patrol car. How can, do you understand this sentence? What happened? That Michael Owen Jr. 
What did he do? He was with a handcuffed man in his oh, patrol no. car. He was with, okay. but I, I mean that he was in this car with this handcuffed man and mm -hmm. he shot at him intentionally, not yes. because of accident or something. Yes. Yes. And the next piece? Third degree murder. Not intentional, not planned, committed with reckless action or no concern for human life. Derek Chauvin was originally charged with further degree murder for the homicide of George Floyd. This is, do you agree with this? That he was not intentional, his action was not planned. And he committed with reckless action or no concern for human life. I don't know. I would not agree with this one. I think he did it intentionally. And he I... planned it because he didn't want to let him go. Okay. I'm not I don't know how what is your opinion, Agnes. I think that I even don't, maybe I don't agree with this divide, with this divide, division, with this division, uh -huh. with this division because I think that about this, I, you know, I, I can say that it was accident, but about the situation, it was just so deep that, you know, that man was staying above this guy, this George, and uh -huh. he was just kneeling him down and... He heard that this George was begging, was saying to him, was saying to him that he can breathe and he okay. can just breathe and he was just doing it and yeah. not Yeah, I think that it was just cruelty. It wasn't something that it, it wasn't something that he maybe planned to you know to uh, kill him or something that he he did it internationally like intentional. Oh. Mm -hmm. intentionally but he was just it was just the most I think that it was the most cruel thing that he can do he was just watching it yes and doing it yes and doing it maybe he didn't plan to kill him but he did it and I think it's something that it's like for me that I can just imagine it that he was hearing all this begging, all his voice and this these officers all around him. Yeah. And no one said something, stop doing it, you are hurting him or something. No, the uh, test buyers they they did try to stop him. Yes, but, uh, yes, but I'm talking only about these police officers. Because yeah. he guys... asked him at one question, what do you want? Doing this, he asked him this question, and he and he answered, "I want to get free. I want you to stop. I can't breathe." He asked the question, "What do you want?" You know, which was ridiculous in this situation. What do you want? Uh -huh. Agnes and manslaughter. And manslaughter is not intentional, not planned, committed while taking an unreasonable, unreasonable risk. A Toronto police officer was charged with manslaughter but was not convicted. 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 So it is not intentional, not even planned. But do I uh, do I correctly may maybe understand it that manslaughter is the situation when someone killed another guy, but uh -huh. in some dangerous for him situation because maybe like he was feared for his life, like self defense. You mean not maybe self not not particularly self defense, but the situation when he was feared for. But when he's feared for his life, that he has some... Uh -huh. So maybe then we course. call it self-defense. So let's let's check the vocabulary again. This is a man slaughter. 
Oh yeah, sorry for the name of the place. No, so, uh, uh -huh. Lotto, to me, this is why I'm checking the vocabulary. Can you see the screen? Yes, I can see your yeah. screen. So to me, this was it. The manslaughter is killing somebody. But this is, uh, look at the definition. Could you please read the, the first definition? Uh, Can you see crime. this? Yes, yes. Uh, uh, okay. The crime of killing a human being without malice aforethought or uh, otherwise. Thought or otherwise. Otherwise, in circumstances not amounting to murder. Because, okay, so it it is uh, the crime without planning, without thinking ahead of killing somebody. And this comes in the special circumstances circumstances and the killer did not plan to murder okay okay uh, it's just oh i'm sorry i killed him by 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 the mistake <laughs> i'm sorry uh -huh. and why are police rarely convicted in officer-related charges of violence and homicide. Uh. Why? Why do you think? Because, mm -hmm. of, no, that's a big topic, right? Yes, I think it's a really big topic and I think that brutality of police is a really big topic and really for for me it's really complicated because yes. sometimes I think that we just sometimes can't understand the situation in which they are they are in actions or in town when they are fighting with some guy that can actually kill kill them or something yes. because he yeah has a capability of it, he has some intentions of it. And I think that sometimes we don't understand, but I think that they are using it sometimes to maybe to make them feel more more important, more power, mm -hmm. more powerful. Right. And and I just think that if like for me sometimes they, I don't understand sometimes this uh these charges when they are charging some officer for killing a guy who can actually kill him or something that you know he was only self-defensing himself mm. but and maybe that's why sometimes police officers are protect, protecting each other because they understand the situation but sometimes that may be blind because of that mm. they are they think that they understand it completely like you know they understand everything yes. and they uh, they think that okay they did it because maybe they felt uh, that they are in danger or someone is treating them or someone is dangerous for them just and maybe yes. that's why yes Agnes, this is true this is true because uh, there are very many policemen uh, killed like every, maybe not every day in the States, but every other day, because there are very many criminals on the streets, very many gangs on the streets. And uh, the job of the policeman in the USA is very heavy and very risky. So this is why we, we need to be careful while giving our opinions. Because we need to know the circumstances. We need to know why. But in the case of Floyd, <coughs> we know. We know circumstances. We know how 
it was, we saw it, and there's no question about the guilt. This was the murder. And this is what attorneys and prosecutor say. Okay. Like maybe so, I mm -hmm. think that w with this situation, if we want, uh, maybe pogonanie to compare, compare, compare. If we want to compare something to the mm -hmm. situation, to maybe, for, in my opinion, maybe understand it better, is maybe that law in the United States that if someone uh, is uh, some, if someone just tak, że tak wejdzie na czymś posiadłość, ale tak że nie yeah. zrobić. Yes, uh, yes. It's just the property. You can't uh, pass by the private property. property. Yes, yes. Because yes. you know, if someone, if someone is an intruder, like you intruder, 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 intruder on your property, you can shut him because yes. 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 And for me, like I think that. Maybe someone can use it to do something really bad and really, you know, something cruel. But for me, it's something that, if something that I think it's uh, słuszne, it's right. It's, it's right. right. It's right because you know you don't know what this guy wants from you. Sometimes you feel dangerous. Sometimes you know you have to self defense, like in some way. And for Absolutely. because. In Poland, we don't have something like it. And last time, I was uh, I was reading about the situation in Poland yes. when a woman came yes. into some woman's house because she was, you know, she was alone at home and she was waiting for his uh, for her husband to get back home because uh. he uh, works late. Yeah. And uh, in one moment in the night, because it was uh, late, uh, she heard some noises in. Uh, up downstairs in her uh -huh. kitchen and uh -huh. she was thinking that it, it was her husband that he, he came back home and he, and she and she went downstairs to um, not to invite yeah. him yes to say something to him because maybe she well, she just wanted to do it and in her kitchen yeah. she saw two mm -hmm. uh, strange guys for her that they yeah. were only uh, they were only wearing some black clothes some yeah. okay the, the the masks the masks on their faces yeah. mm -hmm. and they were just standing them and she was no she was so scared that she ran from them and she found uh -huh. her gas paper gas uh-huh and uh, she uh, she used used it against one of them, uh -huh. and uh, uh, because of that he lost his eyesight. Uh -huh. And uh, she was charged. Vision. 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 Yes, he lost his vision because of that, and she was charged for it. For you know, for uh, for attacked him, and he won in the court. In the court. Oh my god. And oh. for me it was so you, you know we but she and uh, she Okay, she she called off the case and to another court, right? Yes, yes. and in this another court she uh, finally you know, won this one, but this the first sentence when she uh, when she was charged for something like that, you know, for hurting guy who was stranger for her, who was in her house in the middle of the night, and she was alone. It, for yes. me, it was so ridiculous, ridiculous. Yeah, yes. ridiculous, ridiculous. Yes. Yes, sir. and it was some craziness. And yeah, <sighs> yeah, I have not heard this story. When did it happen? I, it was some some years ago, but it, oh, it just okay. got uh, loudless because of some YouTuber who was uh -huh. 
who was talking about it and he was just describing how all this went, why, and he was uh, talking about this law in the United States about that you can shut anyone who is on your property and shouldn't be. And he was just, he was just saying that, and that it was ridiculous that she was charged for something like it. You know? Yes, yes. But uh, the life in the States and the life in Poland is very hard to compare because um, uh, it's totally different uh, social setting in the States and in Poland. Uh, we are monocultural country, uh, but the States is multicultural country. So there are two different, totally different structures. So the police in the States has to be much more organized, uh, much more prepared for the actions. And uh, in Poland, the police don't have such a big cases like the racism, right? right. In Poland, we don't have it. And uh, also the gangs. We don't have many gangs in Poland, as far as I know. And so this is totally different, different uh, situation. What do you think about Polish police? I think that I don't, so I think that sometimes they use brutality for no reason, like they don't have some basis for doing it. But I think that we have a lot of problems with police in our country, and do we don't because some I know that a lot of people don't really understand what the police is doing. And what the police does for us, the, these good things sometimes, because you know, I think that we don't respect them in the right, in the right way in Poland. I know that they are, they have a lot of situations where we don't agree with what they are doing, uh -huh. because they sometimes do uh, cruel things and stupid mm -hmm. and ridiculous things. But I think that maybe sometimes we don't respect them in the way that they should be. Uh, they should behave in a certain way because you, everybody, everybody, we need to work on the respect. We need to be in a certain way and our behavior should, uh, should, uh, should uh, associate with the respect from people. So to be respected is to be recognized as a valuable person. This is what the respect is for me. You can't respect somebody who does nothing to be respected. I can't see any, I don't know any any kind of police action that I would think I respect them. Do you know any kind of police action that could could build the respect? I don't know. Do you? I don't know too. Uh -huh. This moment. Yeah. It would be it would be uh, interesting to Google it because yes. we, are, we are done with this text and I'm going as always I'm going to uh, give you this uh, source uh, for you to have it and to oh. Church, okay. So I have it right here. 
And uh, let me let me go to your site again. Ah, are we here? <laughs> yes, we're here. All right. Okay. And uh, yeah, I'm giving you the text that we worked. Did you get it? Yes, thank you very much. I got it. And uh, okay. Uh, what was the last thing that we we were talking about? Songs, right? And right. The wall. It was always also protest. <laughs> it was also <laughs> protesting about uh, about things. And let's just uh, maybe let's just oh, uh, find something in the text for for us which would be interesting uh, Agnes for us for the next meeting what do you think mm. there are choices very many choices and yeah and uh, lesson lesson we have we want to have the lessons okay all subjects. Look, we need to talk about an injustice. Hmm. Oh, Popat. Oh, my gosh. The Atlantic slave trade. What two few textbooks told you? Maybe this one. Yeah. Do we still have slave trade? Oh, my gosh. Let's open it up. Hmm. Okay, this is what I need to give you, and let's go to YouTube version. Share. I need to share it with you. Right here, I'm, I'm sending you right now. Okay. Okay, I get it. You got it. Perfect. Yeah. So let's watch it. It's gonna take us five minutes. Okay. All right. So All right. I'm going to. Okay. Uh, I'm going to watch it. Let's start. Okay. were enslaved, but many died from new diseases, while others effectively resisted. And so, to meet the massive demand for labor, the Europeans looked to Africa. African slavery had existed for centuries in various forms. Some slaves were indentured servants, with a limited term and a chance to buy one's freedom. Others were more like European serfs. In some societies, slaves could be part of a master's family, own land, and even rise to positions of power. But when white captains came offering manufactured goods, weapons, and rum for slaves, African kings and merchants had little reason to hesitate. They viewed the people they sold not as fellow Africans, but criminals, debtors, or prisoners of war from rival tribes. By selling them, kings enriched their own realms and strengthened them against neighboring enemies. African kingdoms prospered from the slave trade, but meeting the Europeans' massive demand created intense competition. Slavery replaced other criminal sentences, and capturing slaves became a motivation for war, rather than its result. To defend themselves from slave raids, neighboring kingdoms needed European firearms, which they also bought with slaves. The slave trade had become an arms race. 
altering societies and economies across the continent. As for the slaves themselves, they faced unimaginable brutality. After being marched to slave forts on the coast, shaved to prevent lice, and branded, they were loaded onto ships bound for the Americas. About 20% of them would never see land again. Most captains of the day were tight packers, cramming as many men as possible below deck. While the lack of sanitation caused many to die of disease and others were thrown overboard for being sick or as disciplined, the captains ensured their profits by cutting off slaves' ears as proof of purchase. Some captains took matters into their own hands. Many inland Africans had never seen whites before and thought them to be cannibals, constantly taking people away and returning for more. Afraid of being eaten or just to avoid further suffering, they committed suicide or starved themselves, believing that in death their souls would return home. Those who survived were completely dehumanized, treated as mere cargo. Women and children were kept above deck and abused by the crew, while the men were made to perform dances in order to keep them exercised and curb rebellion. What happened to those Africans who reached the New World and how the legacy of slavery still affects their descendants today is fairly well known. But what is not often discussed is the effect that the Atlantic slave trade had on Africa's future. Not only did the continent lose tens of millions of its able-bodied population, but because most of the slaves taken were men, the long-term demographic effect was even greater. When the slave trade was finally outlawed in the Americas and Europe, the African kingdoms whose economies it had come to dominate collapsed, leaving them open to conquest and colonization. And the increased competition and influx of European weapons fueled warfare and instability that continues to this day. The Atlantic slave trade also contributed to the development of racist ideology. Most African slavery had no deeper reason than legal punishment or intertribal warfare, but the Europeans who preached a universal religion and who had long ago outlawed enslaving fellow Christians needed justification for a practice so obviously at odds with their ideals of equality. So they claimed that Africans were biologically inferior and destined to be slaves making great efforts to justify this theory. Thus, slavery in Europe and the Americas acquired a racial basis, making it impossible for slaves and their future descendants to attain equal status in society. In all of these ways, the Atlantic slave trade was an injustice on a massive scale, whose impact has continued long after its abolition. <laughs> Okay, Agnes, are you done? One minute, please. Sure. Okay, I finished. Thank you very much, and uh, I am sharing the screen. Can yes. you see this? Can you see the screen? Yes, I can. Okay. Could you please read the introduction? Let's begin. Slavery has occurred in many forms throughout the world, but the Atlantic slave trade which forcibly brought more than 10 million Africans to the Americas, stands out for both its global scale and its lasting legacy. Anthony Hazard discusses the historical, economic, and personal impact of this massive historical injustice. Yeah. Uh, so this was legacy. Legacy stands out for both its global scale and its lasting legacy. This is the pronunciation. But other than that, congratulations on your reading, Agnes. And now we have the questions. What crops were grown in the Americas that were labor intensive and helped lead to the slave trade? It was sugarcane, tobacco, and cotton. Okay. 
correct. Uh, next. Tribalism in Africa led to intense competition and warfare amongst tribes. Prisoners were sold into slavery in exchange for manufactured goods, weapons, and rum. Which one room? Okay. Which one of the goods was most valuable to tribes that looked to expand their power and influence in the region? Mm. Manufactured goods or maybe weapons because they were using it against the enemies. Mm. Correct. Mm. Ah, bravo. And the next, go ahead. Uh, once Africans boarded the slave ships for the journey to the Africas, what first to the Americas? Oh, to the Af Americas. What percentage did not survive the six to eight week voyage? Twenty percent. Correct. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Most slave ship captains were paid for each slave they started the journey with, regardless of whether they survived the journey to Americas or not. For this reason, most captains were two poppers, mm -hmm. cramming as many people on board as possible. If a slave died on board or showed signs of illness, they would be tossed overboard were used as proof of ears were used and this tight and ears D1 mm -hmm. Correct Bravo Thank you very yes. much Yeah When the Atlantic slate trade was outlawed in 187 what started happening to tribal kingdoms that gained power and influence during the trade's existence? A. Fell apart, leaving themselves vulnerable to European conquest in the late 18th. Grew stronger as they found other valuable exports in Africa. Continued to dominate the region and export goods like gold, rubber and chocolate. Where Toppled by rival tribes decades later. Uh, D. Which one? D. Let's see. D or A, but I'm not sure about this one. Conquest in the late ages. Okay. Oh. So, that shouldn't be it. Try again. Let's try again. It was A, so I think. Mm -hmm. Because they didn't go yeah. stronger. Yeah. This is what we thought first. Yes. Then we lost the track. Okay. And mm, the concept of slavery was not new to Africa or Europe. Both have had versions of it throughout the history. How were the Atlantic slave trade and American slavery different than previous versions of slavery and on, on other continents? I think that it was different because it was on global scale. Before that, the slavery wasn't on this scale. Um, here. Mm, global. Okay. Let's see uh, what they want. Sentence. This is going to be incomplete sentence. Consider writing another one. Because it was on the global scale, this is our answer. Yes. <laughs> Say it. 
Thank you. So it means what? They, to, they are thankful for us. Yeah. <laughs> and explain how tribal created mm. competition amongst tribes in Africa. In other words, how did the slave trade turn into an arms race between tribes where the best defense was a good offense? I think that it wasn't just be because of the, the, the all the men were, were sold by the slavers mm -hmm. and the, in general the women's stays, the women's stays, yeah. stay in the countries and it was a problem because they couldn't offense the other kingdoms. So, who, how would you uh, uh, express it? So, explain how, in other words, how did the slave trade turn into an arm race between tribes? Where the best defense was a good offense. Where the best defense was a good offense. Maybe the general number of men were sold. General number of men. No. Were sold by a slaves. Sold by a slaves? Were sold by a slaves. Sold. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Were sold as slaves by as slaves. As slaves. Were sold as slaves. As Oh, przepraszam, S, S. Mm. Uh-huh, yes. There weren't anyone to protect the countries. So, there, no, I'm not looking, they weren't, they weren't, so, Anyone to protect the country. Any one to protect the to protect the country. Okay. Anyone to protect? Well, let's see what uh, what they want. We're sold. The passive. We like passive. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Save. Okay. So next question is: How did the Atlantic slave trade contribute to a racist ideology that continues to this day? Racist ideology. So how did the anti trade contribute to a racist ideology that continues to this day? Hmm. Maybe it... Oh my god, it's a hard question. Yeah. Because it's all started that these like people were treated as slaves and yeah. people wasn't there people wasn't to weren't weren't, weren't mm -hmm. thinking about them like about humans they were dehumanized and uh, because of that because this black people slavery, slavery. i actually say slavery yes slavery uh, is the background background for uh, 
Uh, can you use the black people or African Americans? Is the background for African Americans? Americans. Mm -hmm. Americans. Slavery is the background for American Americans. So, so the respect, respect, and uh, and what else? And, and equality, maybe. Yes, and the equality. Equality is is not. Okay, the respect, so respect is not uh, uh, present. Yes, yes, I think so. See that? Can you accept this? I R. Know. R. Okay. So can you accept this information? Yes, I can. Right. All done. So we are di we did a lot. Think we we did thinking deep dig deeper. Oh my gosh. Okay. And, uh, go ahead. Okay. Uh, the Atlantic slave trade sent slaves to various locations in the world. What effect did this, this forced migration have on these areas? Visit the Mariners Museum Captive Passage website. Gain some more perspective on how the slave trade affected the Americas. Then read the transcript or listen to this 15-minute history podcast and find out more. Are you a visual learner? View a graphic about the slave trade and destinations here. Browse the Emotion the African American Migration Experience site and find out how African American migrations help shape the culture, economics, and history of the Americas. The transatlantic slave trade section of this site gives a view of the capture of slaves their forced migration to other countries and the impact that this trade had on African demographics. For a great review of all this information, watch Crash Course World History, the Atlantic Slave Trade. Yeah, and uh, view a graphic about the slave trade. Let's see the graphic. Okay. Uh... What are we getting? Ceaseless sale. When you make men slaves, you deprive them of half their future. You just set them in your own conduct. An example of fraud, rapine, and cruelty, and compel them to live with you in a state of war. Accuse Anna, an enslaved African. Yeah. So this is the site which uh, talks about slaves. Uh, let's go back. So uh, this is very valuable. If we had time, we would do it, but we don't have time now. So there are two, uh, two topics here. Uh, dig deeper and discuss, right? And uh, discuss. And I will give you this material, right? Giving you the 
maybe not like this, just a second. I need to give you the main, right? The main lesson, lesson. Okay. And this was it, right? Right. And uh, this is the link for you. Okay. And you will, I, yeah, okay. And you will do whatever you can with this, because it's a lot. Okay. Mm -hmm. Come on. Yeah. Okay, I got it. All right. And come here just to say goodbye. Okay. Thank you very much for your excellent cooperation and interaction, uh, Agnes. What are you holding? Or like... oh, in your hands? No, I don't. Uh, I don't. It's, have on your, uh, it's on your. <laughs> yes, it's my. No, it's my um, T-shirt. Show us the t-shirt, please. The small oh. angel? Yeah. Is it you or no, someone? No, no, I, I don't know who he who she or he is, but just I just bought it because I liked it. Okay. All right. I like it too. And you have for me a little angel angel. Thank you so very much, Agnes. And when are we meeting? When are we meeting? Um, maybe on Wednesday. On when? On Wednesday. Sorry, sorry. sorry. Yes, lady. Uh, Wednesday, one thirty. One thirty. I don't know if I'm not going to have a school lessons. Okay, so uh, three p.m. Yes, it can be, I think. Okay. You can always call me, right? Right, okay. We know. Agnes Kamoya. Yes. So what do you think about today's class? It was too much, right? Tell no, it was, I think it was fine for me. Yes. Like, it was fine. Thank you very much. Thank you and talk to you soon. Okay, thank you very much. Bye-bye. Yes.